Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the US markets uh, mid afternoon update of uh, the US session on Tuesday, the 7th of June 2016. Be sure to visit tradesingler.com, signals and market updates from leading providers, and you can certainly download the, uh, the app via the Android App Store and the uh, Apple App Store too tradesignaler.com okay in terms of US markets I think the story of the day is that the Dow has certainly pierced the 18,000 level let's bring up the chart the, the, the Dow Jones let's see exactly where we are positioned there Dow Jones Industrial Index let's bring up the daily chart the daily chart certainly is pushing higher very impressively very very impressively the weekly chart on the Dow back into that resistance zone slam back into that resistance zone. The 60-minute chart, as you can see here, approaching that 18,000 zone. We certainly have broken past the uh, key 17,900, so impressively broken through there. Okay, the next potential resistance zone, according to my charts, is going to be around the 18,050 uh, zone, and that's where you are looking to uh, or expecting potential resistance on the, uh, on the actual uh, Dow itself. Okay, the 10-minute chart, the Dow, at the moment, we're consolidating on this bull flag scenario. We do have an unfilled gap below. You have support here and an unfilled gap here. So, certainly seems to be a uh, series of unfilled gaps that certainly needs to close. Okay, so again, watch out for that potential zone. Okay, so uh, that's your diagonal uh, trend line. So, again, that certainly needs to be observed. Here we go. We're in that potential zone. And obviously looking to potentially close on the way down. So again, unfilled gap below 17,920 support at 17,860, and that's the the zone that we're going to uh, observe. Okay, now in terms of the uh, the Dow transportation stocks, let's look at the Dow transports. The daily chart at present, you can see we've pierced through the resistance zone here at uh, 7,830. So Dow transports certainly lifting uh, the uh, the U.S. markets again. It, I mean, it's it's really baffling because you're you're getting a lift or you're attempting to lift in U.S. markets based on the premise that Miss Yellen is not going to go ahead with her rate hike cycle. Now, is that a premise to be buying European equ I mean, U.S. equities? You have weak data. I mean, you had a job print of thirty-six thousand last Friday, and yet still we we were moving higher on the back of what additional Kool Aid, easy monetary policy. I mean, where's the growth? It really is baffling, really is baffling. But price action is price action, folks. It's um, you can't argue with it. You just have to embrace it. It's from a fundamental perspective right now. Is I am absolutely baffled. Everything I've learned in my textbooks are out the window, basically. Um, concept of economics, laissez-faire, etc., etc., totally out the window. This is where fundamentals. I understand technical uh, traders where they throw these uh, fundamentals totally out the window because it, it no longer holds true especially with the advent of QE I mean it really is baffling right at present why as to why they're allocating the funds I understand bond markets you you're getting a negative return and the yield almost negative everybody wants to go negative rates etc and there's nowhere else to park your money except equity market and hence the reason why every dip is bought regardless of how bearish the economic news is but it comes a time where rationality and, and logic and and fundamentals must reign supreme so we're in this new normal, folks, and you just have to embrace it, okay? You have to embrace it, uh, especially when you have uh, bearish Asian markets as well. You have Brexit concerns as well. I mean, the QE trade certainly works until you have a fundamental, uh, a major fundamental um, uh, event on the horizon, such as Brexit, obviously. Uh, and then, obviously, the markets generally tend to reverse, but that's not the case at present. So... We continue to trade. It's a breakout. You must respect the breakout. It's more than likely a fake out. I mean, if I were, if I was a betting man, I'm not allowed to bet because obviously I'm a Muslim. Um, I trade. Trading is all about controlling risk, and therefore it's not considered betting. Okay, betting is unlimited risk. There's risk beyond your control, and obviously there's other aspects to it as well. I mean, this is informed. Um, this is a science, etc. And this is why trading is is permitted. Again, going back to um, um, going back to uh, the understanding of transportation index at present, even with oil prices moving or higher up to fifty dollars, yet the transportation index is moving higher as well. Usually, it's the opposite way around, and we are lacking any real fundamental uh, 
strength or news that supports its potential recovery. German data has been weak over the last few days. So again, although having said that, European GDP was actually in the stronger side. So certainly some credit needs to be given there. But regardless, it certainly seems to be perplexing. That's all I can say. Okay, so the Dow transport certainly potentially breaking higher. So again, that needs to be respected, folks. Okay. Now, in terms of the Russell, let's bring up the Russell itself. Now, the Russell is clearly into resistance. From my perspective, you are looking at resistance on the uh, Russell itself. I mean, you do have uh, a potential zone here, and you have a zone here, potentially into resistance on the Russell. Uh, the daily chart of the Russell itself, you had resistance here. Obviously, we've, pe we've certainly pierced through that uh, for now. And the next resistance you are looking at around the 118 level, which we are now, okay? So certainly watch out for that resistance zone on the Russell 2000. Now, bringing up the Russell 3000, if I've got the Russell 3000 here as well. Here we go, the Russell 3000, if I bring up the daily chart or even the weekly chart. I mean, you clearly see we are into resistance on the daily and the weekly. So, again, resistance, okay? So, even if the 2000 hasn't got resistance, the 3000 certainly is showing you resistance. So therefore looking to potentially move lower, okay? In terms of the S&P 500 now, let's bring up the S&P. You can clearly see in the weekly chart, we're into resistance. And next, I mean, if you do break here, then you are looking at 21.35, potentially even new highs thereafter. So again, I mean, with oil being into resistance, copper being flush today as well, the S&P 500 moves exactly the opposite direction. Buffly, okay, very, very buffly. Looking at the Wiltshire as well, Wiltshire, certainly, Wiltshire 5000 certainly lagging. The daily chart, as you can see here, on uh, certainly lagging to a large extent. Now, bear with me one second whilst I just bring up the correct chart. For apologies for that, one second. index seems to have gone out I've seems to go on the brink okay fantastic right let me just bring up the daily here okay one second it seems to have stopped at that why is it stopped Bear with me, folks. It's gone up to thirty first of March and it stopped. Hmm. Yep, certainly seems to have stopped. Okay, well, it's, I can't use a workshop for now. It certainly seems to have stopped in terms of my data feed. I'll have to uh, certainly find out exactly what's happening there. But the S&P 500 at the moment, certainly into resistance, okay? Now, the NASDAQ or the biotech certainly were expected to be weak on the back of Valiant, and even that yet is showing immense strength as well. So very, very impressive. I mean, the daily chart, as you can see here, holding resistance on the biotechs. We bring up the semiconductors. You can clearly see here in the daily chart, we're into resistance on the semiconductors as well, going into gap fill resistance. And then the NASDAQ, obviously, you are looking at gap fill resistance in the NASDAQ. If I just show you the NASDAQ as well, here we go. So I bring up a daily chart, and you can clearly see we're into gap fill resistance. That diagonal trend line resistance is coming into play. So, having said that, also in terms of economic data today as well, you've had uh, weak non-farm productivity, unit labour costs higher, high, high inflation, so therefore weaker growth is a bad cocktail. Red Book Index as well, certainly weaker, and economic optim weak, optimism weaker as well. So you had so many uh, variables that were bearish and therefore indicated risk off, and yet this market has uh, gone in the opposite direction. So very, very impressive move, okay? Fundamentals weak, but the Kool-Aid trade certainly alive. 
Okay, now in terms of the dollar trade as well, if we are relying on weaker dollar uh, to send this market higher, then the dollar index is certainly into support on the daily chart. The four hour chart as well, you're indicating support and on a 60 minute chart, you can see bottoming tails and potential base being built. Okay, so again, everything is indicating for a move higher. Also, we've had a divorce with the USDJPY with the 107 level being hit and yet US markets going in the opposite direction. So very, very confusing times at present, especially the divorce with the yen and the USDJPY. Let's bring up the um, alternative uh, indices. Bear with me. Let's see exactly where we're trading. SBDR, yes, uh, S&P 500 financials as well. I mean, you've got lower lows and lower highs on financials. Yes, we've bounced off the pivot low for the day. And the financials certainly are recovering at the moment. If you do go into gap for resistance, and that's your first resistance zone, and then you have horizontal resistance up here too. So, watching out for that uh, key resistance zone, and then gap fill below. So, watch out for the financials. Financials coming into resistance. Let's bring up the retail sector. Retail sector hitting gap fill resistance, especially with Valiant as well. Weak earnings yet. This market certainly has uh, remained resilient. So again, gap fill resistance on retail. Let's have a look at the other sectors. SBDR energy. Energy certainly is being helped today in the back of stronger oil, but oil prices are starting to move in the opposite direction. The HS formation has been negated, so again, that needs to be respected. And the energy sector certainly is potentially piercing and making potential new highs. If you do break here, then you are looking at 72, and then therefore you are looking at a higher price in the SP 500. But for now, I do expect that to hold, and I'm expecting the $50 level to hold on oil as well. Uh, looking at consumer staples, let's have a look at consumer staples again. Our daily chart is indicating resistance. Let's have a look at the other sectors. Home builders, horizontal resistance, into gap for resistance. So again, indicating resistance on the US market. So it's very hard for me to envisage the S&P breaking through that key resistance zone, folks. And therefore, I'm going to maintain my bearish bias at this current juncture, especially with the price of copper being flush today giving you an early warning sign. Okay, uh, so be careful with regards to the Dow. The Dow certainly is on a stellar path, but it may well be a fake out. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and uh, certainly download the latest app from tradesignal.com. Goodbye now.